Hello and welcome back to EU4 and Burgundian Heritage, where we have now, in the last episode, finished the war against Savoy. We took three provinces. We are going to wait until we call them completely. And during that time, we will see if we can improve our situation money-wise and so on. We, we need uh, a grisp expansion to come down because, yeah, we went up to like 50 again. Not really. It's, um, I think, 48 is going to be the highest. 43, 49. 49 is the highest. 47, 46, 47, 47, 30, 28, 47. Yeah, so... We have a bit of aggressive expansion. We have um, overextension to take care of and so on. So let's take care of that. Let's continue playing. Okay. Military take. Now, this is something that is new with this... Um, with this um, version of the game where you can see how many days you have left to get innovativeness or a tech or an idea or something where you get this pop-up in red this alert in red uh, and when you hover over it you can see which tech or whatever it is how much innovativeness it is, and how many days left you have. And uh, if you can wait, if you can wait, uh, or rather need to wait to take it, then whatever. Now, I would strongly urge you to take any tech or any idea you can take without impacting you negatively too much. To actually take those as soon as possible because uh, getting innovativeness is the best thing you can do since it, it impacts so many things like yearly army tradition decay all power cost minus 10 percent when you're at 100 so getting as much as you can is going to be the best you can do. Now, also, of course, if if you deem that your points is better spent somewhere else, then by all means, go for that. But getting innovativeness as early as possible, as high as possible, is usually one of the best moves you can go with. I say usually because it's not always the best. I would not necessarily have done it if I was doing a military idea. But yeah, we are now 18 years ahead of time. I need to get exploration expansion finished properly. Uh, let's have you do here we go. Uh, our administrator. Uh, oh, I can get. Oh, but the papal state will have minus. Oh, uh, let's increase our trust a bit and let's start improving relations. We have a bit of time before the event. 
automatically done, but not that much really. Uh, yeah, I need to do it now. Okay. Um, how is this war going? Uh, I would not want Baden to get anything, to be honest. Uh, this event is... If you need the money to pay off loans, take the money. Uh, like, if you need the money to have a stable income, uh, whether that's to pay off loan or build a building, which is going to give you crazy amounts of money, then take the money. However, invest the money. is usually the best option to go with because it gives you admin power. Yeah, okay, he got that. He did get it, but I think he will be forced to give it back. Maybe. Maybe. We'll, we'll, we'll see. We will see. Now, I did take factories here in expansion ideas, and it's port maintenance on borders with rival. Minus 50%. So, we are rivaled with France. So, we have one. One here. One here. And one here that is on the border with France. Which means that they cost us half. Which means we will earn more money. Now, it doesn't apply to the port in our capital because it's in our capital but that's fine you shouldn't build forts to have forts along the border to get the most out of that it's it's a nice perk to get if you already have forts along the border But the biggest thing of this is actually center of trade upgrade cost minus 20%. That is the biggest one, to be honest. Now. Let's see what we can do in terms of anything, really. Now, Auxeroy gives us 625 that's not a lot that's really not a lot uh i think i will save the money for the time being we have almost enough here how oh, is yeah our governing capacity is straining a bit but it's not that bad Um, uh, yeah, we, we'll see how we do with um, the burgers. I might add... Uh, cheat add some loyalty just to get uh, over their influence level because for some reason they are very high might be because of event or whatever uh, we need to yeah we need to uh, let time pass to get the uh, grasp expansion down what we also need to do is to send an insult to France so we get more power protection. Uh, if you have 50 power protection or more, you get um, one admin power, one diplo power and one military power. So uh, each month, which is massive. 
add this. And uh, yeah, we're basically what we're doing now is trying to. Um, what we're trying to do right now is see if we can keep as much of our resources as possible like not spending too much money in case we need it making sure that manpower stays high maybe even racing it if if possible and uh, just overall make sure we build up our nation lower on rest uh, core everything make sure we have no war exhaustion and so on um right this is something i i find this very hard to choose between because before they made the changes to their states it was basically always take the administrative clergy option where you get administrative free policies plus one nobles of the robe leader cost minus 10 percent and that is just towards your generals like it's not for uh, your um it doesn't apply to your uh uh, what do you call it? It doesn't apply to your uh, admirals, if I remember correctly. And then we have meritocratic recruitment, which gives us advisor cost minus 10%. That one is actually good. And it has always been uh, administrative clergy or meritocratic recruitment, which is... Either you go with the clergy or you go with the burgers. And I would probably say that it is more interesting to go with um, the burgers now. Since... Since you're not giving out land, it's not sitting at like 90% all the time. Because the 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 argument for not give like taking the advisor cost is that uh, if you take it, you get plus 10 influence with the burgers, which in many cases got them to the point where they would take over your country and you would get a disaster disaster um but as it is right now i would probably say that this one is more interesting because that might mean you can um uh, support level two advisors instead of level one maybe or you can do it a lot earlier than you could before which means you get more admin diplo or military whatever so yeah i would say the meritocratic recruitment option here is slightly stronger now than it was before and i would say it's strong enough that that's what i want to go with And yeah, as you can see, it's we have minus 10%, so we they don't cost us much. Uh let's see what I have more or less churches everywhere. I don't have that many workshops. However, I have them where they make the most. 
Uh, I don't want to spray over in um, like in the low countries uh, just yet because of the, the great privilege modifier. So and yeah, now they are up to 74.4%. That's a lot. But I think I do think we should oh yeah let's, let's just go with it let's just Burgundy has 25% more or, or more trade no that's not possible uh, Limburg needs to be Friesland needs to be my vassal They are allied with Denmark. That would be annoying. I only have one option. One option. And that is the proposal of the clergy. Ugh, that sucks. Okay. And yeah, I can't... It's 52. That's a bit high. So, yeah, we'll see. Now everyone is over, so even if I do this, that's going to be fine. And we can now add this one, Primacy of the Nobility. And there we go. Now we only have the burgers we need to adjust at this point. Uh, the clergy is done, the nobility is done. It's only the burghers where we need to remove the great privilege and add something else. Um, and after that, it's just... Do the agendas and then remove land. Remove land as, lo as long as they are loyal. Just do the agendas, remove the land and just rinse and repeat. Now, hmm. I think getting more of these would be a good option. Uh, uh, Croatia. They took the institution abrasement cost minus 10% and institution spread plus 25%. That's good. So good. Thanks for picking that one and... Yeah, we need to see if we can uh, colonize. I don't think we can. I think we are too far away. Yeah, it's too far away. Uh, France claimed the uh, defender of Catholic faith. Okay, that's a lot of wasteful money spent. Like, that's a lot of money wasted. That was what I was trying to say. Uh, because... <laughs> yeah, you can't really make use of it. Because there's a, a bit too many nations that is still Catholic. Yeah, there's too few nations that is not Catholic in Europe to actually make use of it. Yeah, we're going to have to do that.
and we have now ended exploration ideas. That's good. That is good. And what I want to do is end that quest as soon as possible. Uh, what we should do is increase the legitimacy a bit. Let's add you. We still have like massive amounts of aggressive expansion. So we can't really do anything. You might, you might think that, oh, if we attack France and take one or two provinces ish, something like that, uh, we will be fine. We will not like have the middle of uh, Germany nations hate us for it. No, they will hate us for it. Uh, for some reason, France has a massive... Uh, if you take something from France, you can get the Ottomans against you if you're unlucky, if you take too much. And then we're not talking about Europe in general, like... Some of it has to do with... Uh, with religion, of course. And if they are allied with someone, that also affects it. So, and usually France has a lot of alliances all over the place. And that is one of the reasons why um, taking a lot of stuff from France is not necessarily super easy. Uh, no. Now, I have said before, and I think I stand by this. I am going to disinherit. Because he's 49 years old. Now, what I am going to do is disinherit to begin with. I need to do it because he's way too old at this point. And what I am going to do is... I wonder if I should do this. Yeah, I will. However, he will be weak claim. Uh, what I am going to do is I'm going to allow myself to cheat up the legitimacy a bit. To I think it, I think the threshold is like 66 legitimacy or 67. I'm going to allow myself to bring it up to that. Because yeah. I need it. Uh, okay, France and Scotland allied again. And why did you break the alliance to begin with? Like, seriously. Uh, the AI, sometimes the AI really, really do weird stuff. And yeah, we now have enough force limits. We're not actually paying extra. Um, yeah, we need... One more favor with the button. Oh. We 
We need one more favor with uh, Baden to have um, maintain to to get uh, one more click of trust. And once we can do that, we will take them as a vassal because since and this is something if you can take someone as a vassal. Uh, peacefully, like what we're about to do, then make sure you take them. Uh, yes. Uh, when is it? Uh, but because if they have expanded, it means they have taken their Gersu expansion. They have cored the province, which means for you, it's just free development. There it is. Finally. And we can take them. Boom. They have caught it. They took the aggressive expansion. And I just peacefully took them into my country. Now, when you're in, when you're part of the HRE, people in the HRE will dislike you personally because you integrated a vassal that's part of the HRE. However, if we, for example, have Brittany as a vassal, they are not part of the HRE. They can't become part of the HRE because they are too far away or whatever reason it is. They're not part of the HRE. But we have them as a vassal. And then we integrate them. No one will care if we integrated Brittany. However, if we integrated Baden at the same time, they will care that we integrated Baden because Baden is part of the HRE. And that is true even if we are not part of the HRE. So if France, for example, had Baden as a vassal, integrated them, but France is not part of the HRE, everyone in the HRE will hate France for integrating a prince that was part of the HRE. So something to be aware of uh, if you're allied to someone in the HRE, that you make sure they like you, despite all the horrible things you're doing. Um, we're not that far off from ending this episode, but I, I'm not 100% sure what to, what to do. Wait a second. Oh, 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 oh my God. I was sort of worried that uh, Utrecht had lost his core one way or another, but okay. Uh, yeah, you know what? Uh, what I will do is I will add loyalty. Uh, whoops. Yeah. State. Burgers. Um, ba -ba -ba -bum. how much do we need? We need 24. Uh, and yeah, as you can see now, we can do this is only possible when you can remove, which means you need 
more loyalty than influence. Um, so that's why this lit up, is because we now have more loyalty than influence. Um, but yeah, I'm going to do this, cheat it a bit to get rid of the great privilege. We would be able to get it at some point, but uh, yeah. And I have a on time to decide what we should do. I would not do the monopoly on uh, stuff. I, I don't think it's worth it because you get no income from whatever trade good it is and you can't for like 10 years you can't do it. you can't revoke it so i'm not sure it's worth it the mercantilism is tempting but yeah i think it might be worth it if you have a lot of one trade good you probably should get more mercantilism but whatever uh Yeah, I'm not sure what to take because, like, you could take diplomatic advice that cost minus 25%, but that's just diplomatic advisors, nothing else. Had it just been advice that cost, that would have been a no-brainer to take, but... Yeah, and we have the free enterprise. Uh, the control over, over monetary policy, like five production efficiency, it's, it's a bit low. Yearly inflation reduction is nice. The interest per annum, if you have that much uh, debt that you need it, it's whatever at that point. I'm sort of thinking that private trade fleets is the best to get sh ship trade power plus 10% and a light ship cost minus 20%. I think that might be the best option. If you're going super heavy with um, the navy and you need ad good admirals or many of them getting uh, the burgers in the admiral admiralty uh, but uh, anyway this one to get the admiral cost minus 25 percent and so on yeah sure it might be nice if you're going very heavy with the navy but you shouldn't need it to be honest uh patronage of of the arts you get minus 5% national tax modifier in the beginning. That's a lot of money you lose. So. Grant new world charters. Could be good. But I would probably say. Especially if you have a lot of trade. Going with uh, private trade fleets would be the best option. Now, I don't think we have that much trade, no. We don't we don't really have that much trade, especially not from ships. That's all, also something to uh, think about. How many ships is actually contributing to your overall income? If that's not a lot, then this one does absolutely nothing and it might be better to pick something else. Now, I think grant new world charters because we will want quicker development of our col uh, colonies and global tariffs minus 10% isn't devastating in the beginning because they won't 
generate that much money anyway to begin with. So yeah, let's go with this. I now have everything. Now what I am going to do is to do minus 10 to bring it down to 50 so we don't get any unfair bonuses. And uh, yeah, we are going to end it here because the episode is 35 and a half minute long so but yeah uh, I think the next course of action is to see if we can I think what we need to do is get uh, tech in terms of um, dip diplomatic and admin I would like to finish expansion ideas but we will see what we do there uh, and then sit on sit on it a bit longer to bring down the aggressive expansion to at least something like 20 instead of like 35 uh, and see if we can attack France do a cheat war against them because they are way too strong with all their alliances sadly uh, and take uh, two maybe three provinces something like that not sure what to take but we'll see uh but yeah that's it for this episode so with that thanks for watching goodbye and i hope i'll see you in the next one